Welcome to Wednesday's Word on Facebook Live. I'm Alexis Carucci and I want to thank you for joining me uh, every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time here in the United States. But if you're not able to join me live, um, please come to my page and view this live broadcast at any time. Um, it's a sub going to be an encouraging word for you from the Lord today. Thank you so much for joining me. And as you come on, let me know who you are and where you're viewing from. Thanks again for joining me for Wednesday's Word on Facebook Live. So this uh, month of January, we've been looking at the word restore. How God restores all things. We are his sons and daughters, and he desires to have a relationship with us as his children and to restore our lives. It doesn't matter if we need restoration from our sinful past, hurts, or habits, from things that others have done to us, or from circumstances that have affected us. We can see from the Bible that God wants to redeem and restore us to live the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. It's the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We see that in John 10.10. 10. And that is our uh, main verse for living the abundant life that I have on my website. If you uh, would like to look for any of the blogs that I have written or any of the previous uh, Wednesday's words, uh, go to my website, alexiscarucci.com, and uh, find out how you can live the abundant life. So let's look at what the Lord says about what He wants to do for us to bring restoration and wholeness to our lives. Psalm 103, verses 3, excuse me, verses 4 and 5 says, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's Colossians 1, 13 and 14. I'm reading verses from the New King James Version. God declares that He will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. That's Joel 2.25, and that's the verse that we're talking about today. Jesus is our Jubilee, and He came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We see that in Isaiah 61.2. Let's read on in verses 3 4 and 7 to find out what exactly um, he came to proclaim and to bring. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Wow, what awesome promises that the Lord has for us. Therefore, our response should be, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. That's Isaiah 61.10. Well, 2020 is a new year, and the beginning of a new season, a new decade, and a new era. Last week, we looked at how God wants to restore our health, bringing healing and deliverance into our lives. If you missed that blog or that live Wednesday's Word, go back and listen to it. 
Right now, we're going to look at how God wants to restore what the enemy, Satan, has kept from us and taken from us. In session one of the webinar, Discerning the Times and Seasons 2020, with James Gall and Jane Hammond, Jane, ha Jane Hammond discusses that there has been an assignment of robbery to keep us from our destiny, finances, health, etc. She discusses how Laban robbed Jacob for 20 years before he made a decision not to tolerate it any longer. The story of Jacob and Laban can be found in Genesis chapters 29 through 31. Well, we too need to make a decision not to tolerate what the enemy has stolen from us. We need to engage with the promise of God for the fulfillment of the promised land. We need to be persistent to receive it. We must not look back, but look forward, look ahead and move forward. We need to ask the Lord to heal our hearts and to deal with our hearts so they can be healed. To be energized by the Spirit for breakthrough and to overcome. We are overcomers and we can see that in Revelation um, 2.17. And go back and read through uh, chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation to see what overcomers uh, will receive as a reward. Jane believes this is the season of promises fulfilled. Hallelujah! 2020 is the Hebrew year 5780 and is the decade of the mouth. 80 in Hebrew means mouth. Therefore, we need to decree over our lives what God says about us and has for us. Speak His Word. Pray His Word. The victory is in our mouths. Thank you for joining me on Wednesday's Word Facebook Live. We're uh, looking at what God restores um, that the enemy has taken from us. God is going to restore that. And so uh, last week we looked at some decoration, uh, declarations that you can speak over your life. So if you um, need some suggestions, go back and listen to last week's uh, Wednesday's Word or read the blog on my uh, Living the Abundant Life page and start declaring what God has for you um, this year and for your life. Isaiah 42:22 says, But this is a people robbed and plundered, all of them are snared in holes, and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey, and no one delivers, for plunder, and no one says, Restore. The Lord has ins instructed me to speak restoration over you. Even as we saw last week in Second Chronicles 20.20, 20, which says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. According to Strong's Concordance 6743, the Hebrew word for prospering means to push forward, break, to break out, come mightily, go over, be good, be profitable, and to prosper. We are in a season of crossing over from promises revealed to promises fulfilled. Hallelujah! Time is accelerating. We can see that in verses um, in the Bible, such as Daniel 12, 2, Zephaniah 1, 14, Matthew 24, 33 and 34, and Amos 9, 13. But God is able to redeem the time. Ephesians 5, 14 through 17 says, Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Circumspectly means to be wary, uh, unwilling to take uh, unwise risks walking on the straight path, not veering off to the left or the right. So God created time for us here on the earth because time, He lives in the eternal realm, in the spiritual realm. So 
he can uh, redeem the time and we can co-labor with him to walk as ones that are redeeming the time. Let the Lord forgive you for past sins and heal your wounds so you can move forward. Remember, he has cleansed you of past sins. We see that in 2 Corinthians 5.17 where we have become a new creation in Christ. 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We also see um, in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11, that he has cleansed us from sins. Go and read that uh, passage of scripture and be encouraged that you are no longer um, under the past of your sins. Forgive yourself as well as others that have hurt you. Sometimes it's the hardest thing is to forgive ourselves. We forgive others, but we don't always forgive ourselves. But God wants us to forgive ourselves as well. If He can forgive us, we can forgive ourselves with His help. Release the guilt and shame of your past to Jesus. It's the devil who wants to keep you in a place um, that where you're stalled in a place of guilt, shame, and condemnation. But when we walk according to the Spirit and not the flesh, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's Romans 8.2. Jesus took our shame upon himself at the cross. God declared us not guilty because Jesus took our sins and paid the penalty for us, which was death. Jesus is our righteousness. We see that in 2 Corinthians 5.21. And He covers us. So don't carry those things He's already carried for us. Philippians 3.12-14 says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25 says, Do you not know that those who run a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In 1976, I walked away from the Lord following a betrayal that wounded me to my very core. I blamed God for allowing it to happen and felt that I couldn't trust Him. For three years, I did my own thing instead of following His ways and believing in His Word. During that time, the Holy Spirit was convicting me of sin as I was living in rebellion against God. But the Holy Spirit kept wooing me to come back. And one day, as I was singing a love song to Jesus, he said to me, If you love me, you will obey me. And I knew he was telling me John fourteen fifteen. You see, I loved the Lord, or I, I thought I loved the Lord, but I felt I couldn't trust him. But what he was telling me is if you love the Lord, you'll obey him. So at that moment, I knew I made, needed to make a decision for or against Christ. I knew that in my spirit, <clears throat> that this was the time of decision. And as I considered my life, 
I remembered all the good things he had done for me, and I had seen his protection through times that the enemy could have destroyed me. I saw God's hand upon my life. And the Bible says, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Repentance means to change your mind and turn um, from what you're doing toward God and toward his ways. So at that moment, I chose to, to surrender my life back to Jesus Christ by asking him to forgive me and to um, surrender uh, my life back to him as my Lord and Savior once again. That was on July 29, 1979. And since that time, I have walked with the Lord with greater love, trust, knowledge, and understanding of who He is and His ways as I have spent time with Him in His Word uh, through worship and prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I realized that I loved Him much, first because He loved me, but also because I'd been forgiven much. We see that Jesus uh, said um, in Luke 7 47 therefore I say to you her sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but to whom little is forgiven the same loves little so I love the Lord because he's forgiven me much and I'm so grateful that he loves me he loves you he loves us no matter what we've done. He loved us while we were still sinners. So come and embrace his love. Well, after walking with the Lord, um, I felt some regret over the last three years that I had spent away from him, as well as times where the Holy Spirit was bringing things before me to help me to grow in spiritual things, but I just couldn't believe them or receive them. But the Holy Spirit reminded me that God could redeem the time and accelerate things to bring me into my place of destiny and purpose for such a time as this. He has brought me healing, deliverance, and restoration as I follow Him. And that is available to you as well. He can redeem the time. He can accelerate things to bring you into a place where you should be in your destiny for such a time as this. He has placed you on the earth for such a time as this. Um, but we must be free first. We're, we see that in Matthew 7, 5 and in John eight thirty six, so that we can bring healing, deliverance, and restoration to our families, our friends, those around us, and in our cities and nations. Remember, God fights for us and the battle is the Lord's. Some verses you can look up um, and meditate on is Nehemiah 4.12, that God fights for us. 2 Chronicles 20.15, Romans 8.31, and Isaiah 54.17. The battle is the Lord's and we just need to go and hear from Him uh, what is our part in it so that we can co-labor with the Holy Spirit to bring restoration to our lives and to those around us. Time is short. Uh, James 4.14 and 2 Corinthians 6.2 tells us that. So let's move forward and advance His kingdom, bringing it to the earth. I'd like to pray a prayer of restoration over you today. And as you... Um, hear this, whether it's live or you're listening to this on the replay, agree with me in prayer for your restoration, for I do declare and decree over you that the Lord restores all things, and He will restore what the enemy has stolen. He will restore what the locusts have eaten. He will restore your health, your family, your finances, relationships, whatever it is that you need. So thank you, Lord, that you are the restorer of all things. You bring healing, deliverance, freedom, and restoration into our lives, families, cities, and nations. There is nothing impossible for you. 
We ask you, Holy Spirit, to reveal any areas of sins, hurts, or habits that need healing and deliverance, and we bring them to you so that we can be made whole. We choose to believe your word, Lord, and receive all that Jesus has provided for us to live an abundant life. We ask you for your grace and strength to forgive ourselves and others and to obey and follow you. Help us to co-labor with you so that the walls and gates of our lives can be repaired and restored. We give you all praise and thanksgiving for who you are, what you have done and will do. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for working in our lives to bring healing, freedom, restoration, and life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to praise and worship the Lord and thank Him for what He is doing and is going to do in your life. Remember, restoration can be a process, so follow the Holy Spirit's voice and guidance. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 5.1 Abundant blessings. I look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday for another word of encouragement. God bless.